So while I was going on vacation, Kayla worked really hard. And look what this looks like. Some leaves in it, but you can see where the rust used to be. That's a little bit of dirt. That's a little bit of dirt that's gotten in here. But we, um, no, she, not we, she painted all of this with the type of rust-oleum paint that gets rid of rust. It's safe and for animals. It takes a long time to dry. This has been sitting here for about four or five days now. So we have probably a little bit longer and then I should be able to fill this back up and things be back to normal. So it looks really good, Kayla, thank you. Kayla and I moved his enclosure yesterday. So he has grass and y'all, he's so happy. <laughs> um, what happens is within not much time, it gets to looking like this because he is an animal. So you're having to constantly move him around. But this little joker is getting almost too big for this enclosure because he's getting really strong. So the last thing I want is for him to break through this fence and get out of here. So look at that baby. Hey, Kezo. You eating your grass? Look at him. You eating your grass? Oh, but he's going to have to get a new enclosure for next summer. So this will be the last time that he is in this because he's too strong, like I said, and he will push out of it. I've already been on the, look, I got my purse. I've been on the road this morning. I have because y'all are going to laugh at me. But I have that. <laughs> oh, let me show you this. I'm going to tell you about it in just a minute. So just hang on. So in the back of Shane's truck, I purchased this from the thrift store. In the back of this truck is this. You want to take a guess what I'm, what I'm going to be doing with this? Let's see what you come up with. These little cuties have been acting so different since Willis Jr. died. Um, they seem, I don't know, they've been laying around a lot. Of course, they're not doing that right now. But I talked to Shane. I have a friend of mine that breeds Angora rabbits. And she had one that it was her daughter's rabbit. And I saw the picture of it and she was looking for a home for it. So yeah, I'm going to get them a little play friend. This is gonna happen soon. It ain't there yet, but it will happen soon. I gotta go get some magnets. And then we're gonna put 10 over here, I think. Y'all gonna go get a friend. I took the I took the rug out of here because they kept biting it, but I, I gotta fix this. You can tell it used to be Shane's shop because there's oil everywhere. But I'm gonna get it looking good. Y'all just bear with me. Fluff, I'm bringing you a friend. <laughs> They'll be excited. It's gonna take me roughly an hour to go pick up the rabbit and then an hour home. I can't wait for you to see her. I decided to name her, it's a girl. I decided to name her Lulu. And the reason is because when Willis Jr. died, I was in Missouri. And I was watching Mooney. I was actually at Six Flags when it happened. But that night, I went and watched the musical um, now I forgot the name of the musical. Anyway, music, a musical, and 
the little girl's name was Lulu. And I told my son, I said, I'm going to name this rabbit in Willis Jr.'s memory and name it Lulu because that's where I was when he passed away. And I miss that little booger. You know, I had him for almost four years. And when you have an animal that long, you get super attached. My rabbits are one of the animals that I can take with me to nursing homes and schools and things like the library because they're a small animal. So I really need three rabbits to travel with me when I go places. And so the it when my friend was looking for a home for it, I said, I'm, I don't know why, but I'm going to get this baby girl. So let's go get her. Okay, I have Lulu. Now this was a little girl's um, bunny and she named it Pumpkin. And she asked me if I was keeping the name. And I think I'm just going to name her Pumpkin Lulu. I know that sounds weird, but I probably... I don't know what I'm going to call her. I'll uh, Maybe Pumpkin, Pumpkin Lulu. I, I just want to stick with Lulu, I think. I don't know, y'all. I don't want to hurt the little girl's feelings. Fluffy. Sugarbug. Look, you got a friend. Oh. oh, I hope they'll be happy. Look how beautiful. Look how beautiful. Hey, Lulu. Hey, Pumpkin Lulu. Hey. I gotta work with her because she does scratch. Good morning. I'm in the pigeon coop and this is one of the babies that was hatched here on my farm that made it through the attack last week. And I'm really trying to start working with her to be tame and to land on my finger. So every morning I've been going in here and picking this sweet baby up, look at her. Picking her up to try to let her get used to being handled a lot. Um, the pigeons are still scared to death due to the attack that happened last week with the raccoon. Um, but it seems like they are getting better. I have started locking them into the jail coop at night and for their safety. And um, that should keep them safe. But this baby, I'm going to try to really work hard to when I hold my finger out for her to land on my finger. Yesterday, my baby goat left to go to his forever home. And this morning I came out here and I wasn't putting two to two together, but Poco was crying, which is the mama. And yesterday she didn't cry at all when he left. But apparently overnight she started missing her baby. I will tell you in my experience with having a farm, Pigs do great. Chickens do great when mom and babies leave. Uh, even Dee Dee, the cow, she, she did fine when Cinco left. Goats will cry for a week. It is the saddest thing you have ever seen. I hate it. I literally hate it. But it's part of the process. Like, I, I knew in my heart I couldn't have another Bobby Joe. <laughs> Like, it's just not good for my farm. And where he went is another farm that's a petting zoo. So, I knew that he was going to have, like, the perfect life. They're going to take great care of him. He's going to be traveling, seeing kids, what he's used to. So, I just knew it was the best decision. So, he le left about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. So, I'm going to have to start milking her some to get some of that heaviness of the milk off her. Um, but it's going to be a sad couple of days here at Sneed's Farmhouse. And today is Wednesday, which normally the group home comes today. But unfortunately, Kayla's car broke down. 
and I made an appointment for some reason, I don't know why I did this, for 11 o'clock on Wednesday to get my hair done. That was stupid. So the group home is not coming today. I will be leaving my house around 10.30 to go get my hair done. And I've got to go take Larry's car to get serviced today. So while I'm gone, I wanted to talk to you about something. I've not opened up and talked to you about how things are changing when it comes to my education center. My heart's changing. Um, my thought process is changing. And I thought while I'm gone doing all this, I would share with you my testimony about the education center and what my thought process is about its future and where it's going. She's out here looking for her baby. God love her. Her milk is really full. Um, she's been kicking him off for a while. He's on grain, so he was more than ready to go. Isn't it sad? Breakers don't go play. It's okay, baby girl. It's okay. Maybe I'll go get her some treats. She's getting her some water. This is what this is what they do for several days. It's the saddest thing, y'all. Very hard to watch. But goats get emotionally involved. Like, their other animals don't seem to care. But goats, for some reason, they do. Mm. See how full she is? I need to go milk her. God love her. So sad to sit and watch. Let's talk about the education center. Let me just tell you how it started, why we even have an education center and so forth. So I think it was last year. Shane's never been happy with his shop. Shane is a welder. Shane is always working on a car, building something, fixing something. So his shop just wasn't his dream. And if you watched my live from Wednesday, I talked about us where we used to live. We used to live in Stapleton, which was near Gulf Shores. Shane built this huge shop for him, his dream shop in Stapleton. And then soon afterwards, we moved because he got transferred. So he got a little spoilt about having a big shop. So he wanted to build a shop and he said, I mean, I guess in his brain, he was like, well, what are we gonna do with this other shop? So he said, Judy, you can have this shop and I'm gonna build another shop. And he just started calling it an education center. Well, at the time, my Angora bunnies are wool. And they lived in my garage with fans. I hated it. I hated it. They were in cages. I hated it. And so I thought in my head when he said that I could have that education center, I thought in my head, my bunnies can have AC. So that's where it all kind of started. I'm filling up water before I leave to go get my hair done. Um, that's one thing. I have to make sure there's plenty of water before I leave for a couple of hours. Um, so that's where the education center kind of started. Well, at the time, I was doing tours and field trips only. Oh, look at this. He's all in her business. We need to write down the day, nine months. Watch. He just tried to breed her. I don't know if he's going to do it again. See how his nose is in her business? That tells me she's in heat. Mm. So, 
this is going to be a problem at some point. We are going to breed her again. But we can't just keep rebreeding her, right? And our farm is really not really big enough to separate, you know, and it's hard to know when they're exactly going to go into cycle. So at some point, if these guys are going to continue to be pets, Dexter's going to have to get castrated. And I'm ready for that now. I don't really want Dee Dee pregnant again. But Shane spent a whole lot of money on these cattle. And Shane is not ready to have him castrated. So we're not there yet. So Shane and I are on two different wavelengths. Therefore, we do nothing. <laughs> I could go behind his back and have Dexter castrated, but that's not the kind of wife that I want to be. I want us to be on the same page, and I'm ready to get him fixed, but Shane is not. Therefore, she will be rebred again, um, which is not a big deal. She's only, usually they can have up to six, from what Shane says. Shane's been with, he's had cattle before, with his friends so they can have maybe up to six and then you retire them and she's only had two so she can get pregnant again but it's just not my desire i don't really want to breed animals where shane's like judy i spent all this money and i get it i get it all right that's filled up on to the story so at the time i was just doing mostly field trips and tours i had the group home here and that was in the back of my head because the whole time the group home's been coming in the summer they sit in my garage where it's scalding hot and then work in the heat and have nowhere to go and some of them have uh, walking limitations and they can't go far and so it's a far drive from or walk from my house where the garage is to the farm so they were in the back of my head too and I was thinking this would be perfect for the group home. So it would be perfect for kids, you know, to play with the bunnies in. The bunnies will have AC. The group home will have AC. This is perfect. So that's what I was going along the lines with thinking about the group home and field trips. Well, my thought process has taken a change. Now I gotta bring this water hose in and go give the chickens and ducks and turkeys and everybody fresh water before I leave. I always sweat my butt off even before I get out of the house. So with the group home in mind and my nonprofit in mind, my thought process be began to change a little bit. And the reason is because I was dumping thousands and thousands of dollars into the education center. And I've been in business long enough to realize that strangers do not respect your property, not nor your animals sometimes. Like you have to watch them like a hawk. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, this past December, I opened my farm to my community for a Christmas event. It ended up raining that day and I didn't have a good turnout because of the rain. But we had music, we had food, we had Santa, so forth. The petting zoo was open. Well, to talk about people not respecting your property, I walked in my house to get something. And when I walked in my house, I found a lady in my house using my bathroom without asking. Those type things happen when you're open to the public and you have your house on your property. People don't respect your privacy nor your boundaries that you have. So as I began to dump thousands 
of dollars into this education center and getting it exactly the way I want it, I begin to have a little bit of anxiety about people messing it up. I want you to look at these two little babies over here. You see them? They're over there. Aren't they cute? I'm gonna get y'all some fresh water, hang on. Aren't they precious? Oh my gosh. to put water in these guys look they get so nasty so quick so i'm going to put fresh water in here before i leave to let these little jokers be happy and have some clean water Fill up and on to the story. So, I guess in my mind, originally, like I said, I thought it would be for children to come in there. But as I continue to dump thousands of dollars into this education center, I'm realizing that's not what God's plan is for my education center. What's on my heart is something a lot deeper. I don't see groups of children in my education center. When I went and purchased the couch, the couch is pretty big. It sits probably 14 people, maybe something like that. And I started as I go in there and just meditate, look around. I'm like, God, what do you want for this education center? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, surely I'm not supposed to be dumping thousands of dollars with white curtains and <laughs> bougie educate like surely this is not what I'm supposed to be doing or is this my will is this what I'm wanting like I'm really trying to stop and go is this my will or is this is God pushing me in a different direction and the more time goes on and the more work I put into the education center and the more people that I have been coming in contact with for the past two weeks, it's been mind blowing. I had a guy come to visit to drop off a band card. A band card is just like this coupon card that's a, it's a fundraiser for the band and you buy a $15 card and it gives you discounts at local restaurants around town. Well, he dropped one off and he came into my education center. And the more we talked, the more I found out that he is a recovering addict and does meetings at a local church every Monday night. Second situation was, um, I had a mother contact me. I've been through Al-Anon. Al-Anon is a program for families with addiction. I went through that program for two years and graduated and I can now sponsor other family members that have members in their family that are addicts. Well, this mother called me and spilt her heart out about her son being in addiction and he was in high school and she began to ask me questions and she said, if I kick him out, sh no, she said, should I kick him out? And I said, that depends. And she said, depends on what? I said, your alternative. 
Are you kicking your son out of his house to stop the addiction, hoping that he'll stop his addiction because he's going to hit rock bottom? Or are you kicking him out for your own recovery? And she sat there and she was like, well, I'm hoping he'll quit doing drugs. I said, no, then don't kick him out because it's not going to work. And that was not the answer she wanted to hear because every mom is looking for the band-aid to put on their kid's boo-boo to fix it. And you can't fix addiction. And when a mom realizes that she can't fix her kid, she begins to tear down. But that's when that mom is at rock bottom. And I realized that there were parents in my community that needed help. All right, that's nice and filled up. On to the next. This looks like they've got white milk and chocolate milk. This happens within seconds of having ducks because what they do is they stick their beaks in this mud and then they go dip them in there. And then within seconds, they have a beautiful thing of chocolate milk. So this is a daily process of keeping the water clean. All right, now to fill this one up. Filling up this. On to the story. So, this week, I went into the thrift store to look for a coffee little display that I could put a Keurig on and have coffee and hot chocolate for the group home and, you know, parents and so forth. And um, I came across a guy that was in recovery. And he said, can I work at your farm? And my first reaction was like, yes, I, yes, I need help. And then I begin to tell him about the education center and he goes, wow, we don't have enough meetings in Coleman, places to meet. That would be a perfect place for a meeting. And I was like, okay. Third situation. Got that full. That next. And then this is already clean. You know what? I think I'm gonna let them go for a little swim while I'm in here. Look how happy she is. She can't walk in here. I have to physically put her in here, but she can get herself out. So I've got her in. Now to go get Quacky Jackie. Come here, little girl. You want to go for a swim? Don't you <laughs> Don't you hop out. You go for a swim. You need to take a bath. Like kids not wanting to take a bath. Knowing she loves being in there. I stay out here with her, though. You little silly goose. You didn't wash behind your ears. You need to get back in that pool and wash behind your ears. I know you didn't do it because I was sitting here watching you. Chirps will stay in there for a while. So I'll go fill up their water container now. <coughs> On to the chickens. The next thing that happened was I had a school contact me. And the school asked me if I had a place to change an adult's diaper, a kid's diaper. I'm sorry, I said adult. It's an, it's a, like a middle school kid. So not an adult, not small kid, not a little bitty toddler's diaper, but like maybe like a 10 year old's diaper. And I thought in my head, I should by fall. So that was another thing that happened. So slowly over the past two weeks, my mind has shifted of the purpose of the education center. And as I begin to talk to these people uh, in addiction, whose family members are in an addiction, in Coleman, I know for a definite fact, there's no Al-Anon meetings in Coleman. The closest one I think is in Madison, which is about a 45, 50 minute drive. Last year, I was approached by an addiction center to start an Alateen. Alateen is for teenagers in addiction. Alateen is a 12-step program meeting. They asked me to run it. Um, I said I didn't think I could do it at the time. 
And the reason is because I think I would be invested in trying to save these children. Y'all have some fresh water now. I've had this chicken since day one. Isn't that amazing? Her name is Margaret. I named her after uh, my mother, but that's her. She lays green eggs. It's really cool. All right, everybody's coming for fresh water now. You're welcome. <laughs> gonna go put the water hose up now let's see everyone has fresh water now so i knew that i would get invested in other words what would happen is i would be providing them supper and counseling and midnight calls and if they had a relapse i'd be getting them out of jail it's just the mother in me right i just said i'm not strong enough well, I have a sponsor through Al-Anon, and I called her. I'm like, they're asking me to do an Al-Anon meeting. And I, she said, Judy, you would be perfect. I said, I can't do no Al-Anon meeting. I, I'm not, I, like, I'm a train wreck. I can't do that. And so I bypassed it last year, and I said, I just, I can't do that. Maybe I could help family members in addiction, because I do understand that but I don't understand addiction myself. As a matter of fact, addiction makes me mad. <laughs> like I wouldn't be good at that. If someone relapsed, I think I would be like ticked off. Like I put, I put in all this effort and you just gonna relapse. I think I would do that because I don't quite understand. So I knew that was not for me, but I think that I would be good at helping. I'm getting the water hose. I think that I would be good at holding someone's hand and helping them not be surrounded by the disease and rescue themselves versus a family member. I think I could do that. Well, between that time and today, I met Kayla. Sorry, I might get emotional. <laughs> and I found out that Kayla does understand that. Kayla has been, and she has, she, I'm not saying anything that she hasn't said herself. So don't think that if you don't know Kayla's story, don't think that I'm telling her story because on her platform, on another platform, the blue platform, she has shared her testimony. Kayla is 13 years in recovery. So God just placed someone in my life that understands addiction. And all these things are happening right before my eyes. And I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing? And I had a talk with Kayla and I said, hey, my thought process on this education center is changing. And she said, what are you thinking? I said, I don't know why, but my heart is led towards what my nonprofit is all about which is giving back. And my heart and my love is for group homes, sober living facilities, domestic violence shelters, um, <laughs> autistic kids. That is where my heart and desire is. And I think that's where I'm supposed to be. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. But, if, but from a business aspect in my brain, I'm like, but I have to pay for this. If I hold meetings and do everything for free, how do I stay in business? <laughs> like, how do I do this? So I am in limbo about exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And this week, as I traveled to Missouri and I went to the zoo and they were free, I thought in my head, how do they do it? How, how, how can they be free to the public? So it's put thoughts in my head to go, this can happen. I can rely on donations like the 
like the zoo, the zoo relies on donations. The zoo sells drinks and snacks and so forth to fund it. So my thought behind this is I, I can see myself having meetings for parents with, the, with kids with addiction that are hurting. They're trying to figure out how to hold a job. For a parent that's trying to figure out how to hold a job and have a struggling teen addict at the same time and have smaller children that they're trying to raise and not have them around their kid that's in addiction. My farm can be a safe place for those people to come and learn how to be the best version of their selves in the middle of chaos. And I talked to Kayla and I said, Kayla, I can't run an Alateen. I don't understand addiction. I, I can't. And she said, I can. I said, Kayla, I think this is what we're supposed to be doing. I do. I, I do. And as more group homes contact me, I'm a safe place for them. And this past week, when I was in the uh, thrift store, let me tell you what happened. Kayla said, Judy, did you see what was right next door? I said, what? She goes, it's an autism center. It's a sensory room. I said, Kayla, let's go over there and talk to them. So Kayla and I looking like who to thunk it, sweat, poop, like no makeup, looking terrible. <laughs> we went over there and introduced ourselves. And I am sending her literature right now for Kayla and I to host a field trip for those kids that are in the sensory room and need to do a field trip. Everything's just falling in place. And I, I tell you, I tell you all this because I want you to know what my thought process is for the for the education center. It's not to do field trips in there. I could probably bring small tours in there, like one family, like when it's just one family but it's not for a group of kids. It's almost like, mm, whoo, I'm fixing to get, I'm fixing to cry. Last month, I took the word sanctuary out of my name because of the confusion. And I feel like God just gave me a sanctuary back without having the name. I feel like this, the education center is a sanctuary for people that need it. And it's so beautiful to be a part of it. Sorry to get so emotional, but it's such a joy and a pleasure to be a part of what God is creating right here in my, I was looking to see if they need water. No, they're good. Oh, shoot. There's a baby chick out. God, now I'm going to have to go chase a baby chick. Hang on. I think I'm just going to open the door because these chicks, baby chicks, have gotten big. And I'm going to let mom and the babies free range for the first time today. That's what I'm going to do. But see, this baby chick, look at these turkeys. They're not even supposed to be over here. The baby chick is on the outside. So mom, she's mean as a snake. So oh, oh she's gonna beat everybody up that comes in there. Maybe this isn't a good idea. Hey, you're gonna have to be a nice mom. Look at her. She don't want anybody in there with her babies. But see how big they are? Y'all, it's time for them to free range. But she's gonna be mean as a snake. <laughs> she's gonna be mean. Okay, they'll be fine. It's always an adjustment period when free range happens, when a new baby happens, like all those things, it's always an adjustment period. Okay, let me go turn the water off. 
it's about 9.45. I gotta leave here at 10.30 to go get my hair cut. And I gotta go do the rabbits before I leave. And my cute little baby duck and the baby turkey and the baby chicks that live together. I've gotta go make sure they have feed and water before I leave. But everybody in the farm has been well taken care of today. I'm glad today that I was able to share with y'all my vision and my desire for the education center. I felt it was important to y'all because, I'm gonna tell you why. Because social media, meaning you, backup dancers, help provide a safe place for these people. You are a part of this. Without you, I couldn't do this. Because when you watch my videos, why is everybody going crazy? When you watch my videos and you comment and you like and you share and you tell your friends about Aunt Judy and the farm, you help me be that nonprofit farm like Missouri Zoo is and be free to these people that need it. You help pay for this and make this happen. This is not something that Judy's doing. This is something that you're helping me accomplish by my social media growing so that I have income so that I can be like the Missouri Zoo and be free. So I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all your support.